Well, greetings, everyone. I'm Robert Locke with TrainingPropertyManagers.com, and we're here today to examine the challenges of converting a security deposit to rent. Now, this will create some controversy because it's kind of outside the box thinking, and some uh, traditionalists will kind of do a knee jerk as I did when I first heard this idea. Our guest is attorney Monica Gilroy, who's been partnered with us for 20 years and helped us in the management business and has a huge clientele across the country in the property management industry. She kind of helps us navigate through these challenges uh, that, that we face in the business. I think the COVID-19 certainly qualifies as one of those big challenges. So welcome, Monica Gilroy. Oh, thanks so much, Robert. And always good to see you and all of our friends out there. And definitely thanks for driving this topic. You know, this is one, you're right, that we've had Facebook groups growing crazy over this topic you know, kicking it around. So I really appreciate you helping me bring some clarification to the situation, you know, hoping we can really dig in and tease this one out together. Well, good. Well, let's dive in. During the last four decades, I've, I've done property management in Atlanta for 40 years. I've held fast to this policy of never using the tennis deposit for current rent and for obvious reasons. So why now? Why would I attempt to change this long-standing policy? Well, I think it's a great question. And you know, let's be really honest. I mean, some managers are, are not going to. They're not going to because of their long-standing policies um, that they have, maybe their uncertainties. But if you really think through this, right? Think through the issue. This really is the time to reconsider the strategy. And I think obviously a, a terrible time like this, a national pandemic like COVID-19, really prevents, presents one of those times to do that. Um, I do think, though, that there's three issues that we have to think through and talk through um, to really get in the weeds and understand it and get our arms around it. So let's, with your permission, let's walk through those. The first one, of course, would be that over overriding concept always that at least it's just a contract, right? It's just an agreement in writing between two people. Um, obviously, there's certain parts of our standard of practices that are written into contracts, right? I mean, that's true of any industry, right? Banking industry, medical professionals, obviously real estate contracts and certainly property management contracts. But we know that over time, things do change. Um, they have different ways, for example, of how we collect rent, right? It may be very different now than how we did this 20 years ago even. Think about um, signing real estate contracts. Um, we never would have imagined an e-sign 25, 30 years ago, right? But obviously we do that all the time. And so best practices evolve with the industry and that's um, you know, our world changes. It's just something that the industries have to do. Now, we all know on this video, because we're all smart, that obviously contracts can change, right? And they can be altered if the parties feel that it's in their mutual benefit to do so, right? We do this all the time. We change, say, like anniversary dates. Um, rental amounts can be changed. If we want to have a rent credit, for example, towards an ultimate purchase, nothing really is off the table in terms of altering a contract. And if we're going to be altering it in the sense of taking a security deposit and using it as rent, we just would want to be sure, Robert, that there aren't any regulations in our local area, county, city, state, that would prevent it. So if you're not sure, as we always remind you, be sure to check with an attorney if in fact that is a prohibited practice. But assuming that it is not, then sometimes we have to look at the second issue, which is that we sometimes have circumstances that are nationwide or worldwide, similar to what we're experiencing with COVID, that just require us to make certain decisions to our contracts. Um, this isn't the first time, if you think about it, our industry has had changes to some of our practices and forms because of a national disaster. Think, for example, the big changes we had in 9-11, after 9-11, on the banking side and on our, um, you know, how, we, how we ascertained how, what applicants' backgrounds were, things that had checked it affected property, our property management ways simply because of the tragedy of 9-11. Think, too, about how closings have been forever changed based upon the crash in 2008. Um, you know, we never knew what TRID was uh, before, you know, before 8, before 08. Um, now we all understand the way that it has to flow, and we all adjust it. So you have to be flexible. You have to be adaptable and really look at our world, and especially our business world, and constantly think about options, which maybe you've never considered before. And obviously, a pandemic like this with so many people out of work, unemployment, um, just you know, the true financial devastation families are feeling really should meet that criteria. So we can't really get stuck in the past. We've got to think, okay, proactively, how do we deal with this now in the future? 
To me, the best practice has to always be as a property manager that you're keeping up as the world evolves, right? You're not stuck in one way of doing something. And obviously the pandemic is gonna change a lot of best practices. Finally, don't forget that right now, and we've talked about this before, Robert, that the property managers are very, very much on the spot with their owners. The owners are looking to you to be sure that you are acting in their best interest. And I think that any owner would agree with us that the principle that money today, right, having money, the rent today is obviously more valuable than money tomorrow, right? That, that having that money right now today is going to be more valuable to the current situation. I found, Robert, that most tenants of ours are happy to see the rent coming in, even though they know there could be a risk when the tenant moves out in five months or a year with there not being security deposit there on the table. But as long as the owners understand that going into this process, and as long as the tenants understand that by agreeing to have their money in the form of a security deposit applied to rent, that you know, the, the tenant is understanding what it could look like at the end of the lease as well. Obviously, again, both parties have to agree and the manager is really there just to be ready to execute on those wishes. So if the owner and the tenant, everyone's willing to do this, you should accommodate them, right? Why not? Um, a manager's comfort zone, a manager thinking something is new or, or unusual to them shouldn't prevent the parties from doing what they've mutually agreed to do. Now, obviously, as the agent of the owner, it's your job to execute on whatever it is that you know both parties want to do. And obviously, don't push a preference either way. You wouldn't want it to be said that you know you were pushing this because your commission or your monthly fee comes out of a rent payment, something like that. You really need to present it in a balanced fashion for, for, for both parties. You know, Monica, this is crazy. Over 40 years, you can imagine how we've had to adapt to the kinds of changes that you've described. You know there are going to be some old timers in this industry that are going to go ballistic with this idea, yeah? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's true anytime you see change, anytime you see something different. I've, I've had a national client push back on it. I've seen some trainers do it. Um, I saw a larger industry leader get very upset about this concept. But, it, you know, that's okay. If they're not comfortable doing it, then they shouldn't be. But I think as a property manager, if you can get your comfort level when you see, uh, especially what we're talking about in terms of that, that element of contracts and having the right documents in place and good procedures in place, and if you need that blessing from an attorney, so be it. But it's something that a lot of our clients are doing, doing successfully and doing well, um, simply because they're able to you know, think uh, really outside that box, but also think about just the pros and cons for both the tenant and the, and the owner, um, really trying to stay neutral in those conversations and obviously being ready to execute uh, on that decision once that decision has been reached by the owner and the owner and the tenant. Wow, that's fabulous, Monica. Listen, the the question that viewers are kind of asking right now is where can they find these documents? I know as a small uh, law firm, uh, you can only handle so many calls and so many individual clients in a, in, in a day's activity. Uh, tell me what viewers can do to see these documents and have the option for downloading them so that they can use them and and, and uh, run them by their clients. I, absolutely, that's great. Yeah, you're right. A lot of people have asked for information. So we thought it would be best, especially during this time, to create a special spot where people can go to obtain information, but also documentation. Our site that these can be found on is gilroyfirm.com slash COVID-19, gilroyfirm.com slash COVID-19. Well, thank you, Monica, and we appreciate your insights and uh, look forward to doing this again. For the folks that are uh, uh, listening and watching, I've, I've written uh, Monica's uh, uh, website down right here, gilroyfirm.com slash COVID-19. Now, on that page, you'll also see a link to Monica's new Facebook page. She's developed a uh, Q&A there, a forum for people to go to and can kind of ask questions more on the legal side. And this is where you can kind of get information from a law firm that'll help you through a lot of these challenges. In addition to that, she's developed a private YouTube channel. So you can go onto YouTube and just do a search for the Gilroy firm. And you can, uh, she's shooting a weekly video, uh, primarily right now going through the CARES Act and going through the issues of COVID-19 We'll post this video up there along with some others that she's doing. So she just kind of turned the corner here and 
really working at getting a lot of information out to people all around the country that um, that that will help them out in this uh, crisis. So thank you, Monica. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. And let's keep this going. Let's keep some videos going and see what we can do to help the industry. Absolutely, Robert. Thank you as always. And everyone, we're all in this together, so stay well.